Hey there, welcome to the Savvy Fox YouTube channel, our investment platform. Today's topic is about challenging Kellogg, the breakfast and snack giant. But first, the disclaimer. We are no financial advisors. You're responsible for your own investment and financial decisions. This video is not and should not be regarded as investment advice or as a recommendation regarding any particular security or course of action. Let's dive right in. The history of the Kellogg company goes back to 1876 when the two brothers, John Harvey and William Keyes Kellogg worked at a sanatorium. Among others, the two brothers made researches to improve the vegetarian diet of the sanatorium's patients, especially in the wheat-based granola. They were cooking wheat for a type of granola and put the tempered grains through the rollers and interestingly, each wheat berry came out as a flattened thin cake. The cornflakes were born. In 1906, William Keyes Kellogg founded the Battle Creek Toasted Cornflake Company after having convinced his brother to relinquish rights to the product. It was in 1922 that William Keyes Kellogg renamed the company. In 2012, the Kellogg Company made its largest and most important acquisition by buying potato chips brand Pringles from Procter & Gamble, which made Kellogg the world's second largest food, snack food company after PepsiCo. The Kellogg company's mission statement, nourishing families to so they then can flourish and thrive, got a more clear competitive edge. Win in breakfast, be a global snack powerhouse. Let's get to the business overview. The Kellogg Company is a large packaged food business and with an enviable brand portfolio and an amazing global footprint. The business has been play paying out dividends since 1925, but here's the catch. The Kellogg Company is not a dividend aristocrat, which means it does not pay, play in the exquisite league of prestigious companies such as the Coca-Cola Company or PepsiCo or Hershey which have managed to increase their payouts for more than 25 years. So the Kellogg company, while showing inherently robust business performance, has not been successful in achieving consistent growth to the top and bottom line. So consequently, there were time periods when the dividend did not grow at all. It was just in 2005 when the business resumed an increasing dividend policy. In contrast, for instance, with the Coca-Cola company, we're talking about 58 years of climbing dividends. The Kellogg company shows a diversified product range. Uh, the, the business makes cereals and convenience foods, including crackers and waffles. The original corn flakes, the breakfast cereal made from toasting flakes or corn, are still very popular for hundreds of millions of breakfast servings every day. Just in any supermarket around the globe, you can see a picture like this on the shelves. The frosted um, flakes or the frosties are a breakfast cereal that is as well consisting of, of uh, cereals, but it is sugar coated, sugar coated cornflakes. These sugar frosted flakes were introduced in 1952 by the company. As we all know, the original corn flakes contain already significant amounts of sugar and the frosted flakes, when consumed daily, are of course even less healthy. As said, the, the Kalo company is the second largest snack producer with its very popular products Pringles and Cheez-It and waffle products such as uh, Echo. Let's get to the company's strengths and uh, challenges. After some years of sluggish growth, the Kellogg's company shows more robust top line and growth and uh, profit margin expansion, which is due to a continuous focus on initi initiatives to sustain incremental growth moving forward. Uh, what's certainly welcome is that the company is adapting to consumer trends and tries to focus on less sugary products and healthier food servings. Let's not forget the Kellogg company is facing some strong headwinds. 
The ready-to-eat category is in decline on a global scale and consumers are turning to other breakfast options and the trend leads to less sugary products. Particularly interesting is the company's venture in giving their products a more healthy image, for example through protein flakes and their cooperation with other companies, in particular in the area of fitness. The Kellogg company has also taken a strong focus on e-commerce and continues setting its priority at marketing, which first strengthens and diversifies its distribution channels. The Kellogg company also uses its marketing experience to diversify its packaging uh, presence. But of course, there are challenges. The company shows a relatively high financial leverage a Bay AA2 Moody's rating, which does contrast with a much stronger credit rating, for example, of PepsiCo, with a A1 Moody's rating. But on the positive side, we have a company with iconic brands and stable operating performance in its core business. What certainly also did as positive aspect is its growing snack business led by Pringles brand. So, uh, a few thoughts on the Kellogg stock. Uh, as a value investor or, or, or citing Benjamin Graham, um, we can say that the stock market is certainly a popularity contest in the short and medium run and a weighing machine over the long term. And the Kellogg company has shown at least stable operating performance over the long run. The business grew top and bottom line annually by a low single digit rate. The market clearly has taken into account the iconic brands and enviable global footprint of the company. This is certainly reflected in an upward stock price trend as you can see on the upper chart. Uh, it has certainly been a, a bumpy road here and there, but eventually the stock price has been up pretty in line with the business as uh, fundamentals. But still, if you invested in 2011 at a price of roughly US dollar 50 per Kellogg company share and 10 years later the stock is trading in a range of 70 to 80 dollar, you can Im immediately see that there are certainly more interesting alternatives. So just looking at the chart below, which belongs to the PepsiCo, um, you can see that uh, with that company, we have a, a more broadly diversified, more robust, more dynamic uh, business that is clearly, clearly outperforming the Kellogg company with respect to top and bottom line growth. Um, so with PepsiCo, investors have more than doubled their money over the, the last 10 years in terms of book gains and have seen much stronger uh, dividend growth. What we can also see with the Kellogg company stock is a relatively high valuation. For decades, the stock traded at a price earning ratio of 16 and yielding over 3%. And currently the stock is trading at a, a P ratio of almost 20 at a stock price of roughly $70 and the dividend yield is significantly below 3%, which is the, the long-term average for this company. Uh, paying a P ratio of 20 for a large non-cyclic com company with a slow growth can certainly be a tricky one, as the future growth prospects are not necessarily high enough to warrant such a multiple. So personally, I would consider more attractive options um, or consider another timing to get into such a company. For instance, PepsiCo trades about at about a 20p ratio, but has a much stronger growth potential, better earnings qualities, shows stronger business fundamentals with a A1 Moody's rating. And of course, the beauty of the stock market is in fact that it provides us with a market price that ch uh, changes over time as long-term oriented investors, we can put strong businesses such as the Kellogg company on a watch list 
and wait until we see a price that are, we are comfortable with. So with that being said, I hope you have enjoyed the snapshot shot on the, the Kellogg company. Please also check our website on www.sevifox.com and don't forget to, to, to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel and uh, uh, we hope to, to, that you're tuning in for our next video. Thank you very much and bye.